All right, guys, here we are. Episode five of the Pwncast. Uh, once again, I mean, this is it's been really fun. I really enjoyed doing these so far. Um, I feel like all the guests have been extremely entertaining, have a really good story. And uh, I, I look forward to continue doing this today is a very dear friend of mine. Uh, you guys might know him as My Alter Ego or Ganthrone, if you uh, know him in-game. Um, out of all the template videos that I've done, um, you know, I always like to play the templates for, uh, you know, a, a couple weeks later. His was the hardest to let go. Like, I just really enjoyed doing his the most. Um, and it was really unique and very, very powerful. I just felt like I was farming like super crazy. Um, and... Not only that, he's a, a an extremely entertaining streamer. Um, <clears throat> he's he's just very interactive with the chat. He's uh, he, he's he's always a lot of fun, and it's always a party, man. It's always a party. He'll party with me on Whiskey Saturday. Wake up, and it's I mean, it's like he's partying on Sunday morning. <laughs> so it's uh, it's wild. But you know, I, I, again, I just start rambling on about you. But really, I mean, you, I mean. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about you. That way, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't talk for you. So let's hear it, buddy. I am my alter ego. Thank you for the, the introduction, Pwn Star. Um, I've been streaming on Twitch for about mm, 10 months so far. Uh, actually came over from the Mixer community um, Mixer. with that whole debacle when that went down. So I had to kind of like rebrand and restream myself. That was kind of like kicking the dick a little bit but uh you know i made it mile three go 24 we got back and uh yeah man i'm just i'm excited to be here and uh chat with you a little bit tonight so you i, I gotta i gotta ask man mixer what what led you into mixer and because i i i guess i might have started like after that or, or whatever but i i never really knew anything about mixer i just went straight into youtube streamed there for a little bit and then found restream and that's when i started doing multiple platforms but but Mixer was the one that kind of came and tried to take over Twitch. Is that right? So Mixer, interesting story, right? It was such like an, an easy integration because I did a lot of like gaming on Xbox, actually. Yeah. And it just it was like the one button click and you're 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 live. It was like no delay between your chat. Nice. Like I could just put it on my console, one button. We are sweet. Uh, -huh. uh and then you know uh the whole twitch thing with fortnite and ninja and all the acquisitions of them f basically just putting mixer out of business and uh yeah after that happened because i had like four or five hundred followers some, some you know i had a decent sub count i had following for PUBG, a following for nba 2k i didn't do a lot of uo streaming obviously because mm -hmm. Uh, also online didn't exist and not playable on the xbox but it was always you know like come on you owe 25 year old wizard game yeah uh yeah. always in our hearts right so like when i came in i started streaming on twitch that was like you as an inspiration and like getting me back into you i was like man i'm gonna i'm gonna stream this shit this is like the ultimate sandbox game so that's what i end up going back to doing so speaking of Ultima Online, I mean, I, how, when did you start playing Ultima Online? Well, you guys know me as a nice, you know, nice, nice kid. That's a nice <laughs> kid, past Yeah. I man. was not a nice kid when I started playing. Uh -oh, yeah. 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 I started when I was, I think, about 13 years old, and uh, I had actually had chicken pox. Okay. My brother had brought me over to his house to get his daughter also chicken pox, right? Yeah. So that was like when you got someone that had chicken pox in the family, dude, come get my chick, my kid chicken pox. Like you wanted. So yeah. that was the plan. While I was over there with him doing the chicken pox thing, he's like, bro, come play on my computer. And he had OSI Atlantic installed. And uh yeah, 24 years later, man, they, they, it was just that love. The the young, bright eyed, bushy tail, starry eyed, you know, my alter ego, just hanging out, just looking at this weird graphics. But for the time, it was amazing, right? In yeah, the yeah. you know late 90s. Yeah, yeah, man, it, it was. I 
It's funny you say that because, you know, now the number one hang up for people wanting to play this is like, man, I just can't get over the graphics and, and everything. But I do remember back then I just thought I was like, wow, it looks so real. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, oh, wow, I can I can dye my shirt and it'll change the color both on the what's called a paper doll. Right. Mm -hmm. And the character in game. And and I would I would spend so much money at the tailor every time just buying a bandana or a skull cap and a kilt and sandals and like <laughs> whatever I could come up with in a new outfit. I'd spend, you know, 8,000 gold, which was a shit ton of money for me back then. Um, cause I was young and, and not good at the game at all. Right. And, uh, oh, yeah. and diet, whatever different colors. And I can remember getting a black dye tub and I just was like, Oh shit, I'm fucking elite now. Nobody, nobody's going to screw with me at all. Um, but that, that is funny, man. Cause also I remember, getting you know everybody when they'd get chicken pox it's, it's, it's supposed to be like the younger you get them the less severe it is right mm -hmm. something like that yeah 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 and so you that that's when you started playing uo you you were watching you saw him playing it and you just kind of yeah he was like bro come over here play because he knew i was a really twitchy kid i played a lot of yeah. you know super nes you know whatever yeah. at the time was and that's why i think i love the graphics of uo too right because like we got to remember the era that the game came out in yeah. Right. So we weren't we, sure. Now we have Xbox Series X's and we have PS fives and fucking supercomputers with fucking 480 TVs yeah. and fucking flying off and all this shit. But in the nineties, we didn't have that shit, man. No, no. So you go and look at UO and it's like, oh, this dude's riding a, a, a horse that, that can attack and has a dragon. And it's yeah. dude, my mind was blown, dude. And my, my young, my mind, my young imagination just went wild on this mm -hmm. game, dude. It went wild. I, th I think that was the, the biggest thing for me, too, is that, uh, you know, me and Beltane, we would just be at, at school and just like just like you said, our imaginations would go wild. Like we'd go off into our separate classes and then we'd just like rush to meet each other before the next class. And we'd be like, oh, well, I think if we do this and we can get more gold and like it was just such like a that was the main thing we cared about. You know what I mean? Was like coming up with enough gold to buy a house, and mm -hmm. whether that meant begging, mining murdering killing ogres just whatever man we just wanted enough gold to buy a house and that was that was our number one goal man oh yeah uh, what what was like um you know what what kind of player were you i mean you, you kind of hinted at it a little bit you know like tell us the first time you logged in what you did and then kind of okay. where you evolved and who you turned into not today i know who you are today but okay so young ego as I've alluded to, was uh, was a shithead. Let's 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 put it as, as it is. I started my humble beginnings playing my my brother's character, alter ego. Yeah, and uh, it was just like a really unique name. You know, it's like I didn't even know what it meant at the time, and I was like, okay, it's another self, and I'm playing an online video game that you can literally. literally be anybody so alter ego it just it was like it just fit yeah and i kind of assumed that moniker over the years a little bit like because that's the character that i love to play and became to be known on i played uh osi atlantic for like 24 years uh little tidbit of information i still have an active account i just can't let the nostalgia and the keep and all my shit that I've acquired throughout the years drop. It's it's, and I think that's why the servers are still going. You got suckers like me, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think so. Uh, Houses that have only had their door opened once a month for the past twenty, maybe, years. maybe a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was playing my brother's mage, but uh, when I actually made a character, path. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was a very bad shitty thief. And by shitty thief, I mean very, very successful. I was a <laughs> scamming. Yeah. I used anything within game mechanics, y'all. Let's be real. Because there wasn't all these, you know, scripting programs and things like that. You basically had uh easy UO mm -hmm. and you had U assist. And if you had you assist that you had to get like you had to that was an aftermarket program that uh broadsword approved and you had to get like you had to buy a key and like you know put it in there and that was good. And then you also had the easy UO, which is more like the scripting and stuff like that. 
But uh, yeah, man, getting things on last target, last disarm people, uh, steal their vanquishing silver, uh, you know, axe, steal yeah. their their ginseng, steal, go to Buck's Den, wait for them to attack me, steal their band aids. I literally would steal the underwear off the off of their character if I could, like. And at that point, I'm just going to chase you down and beat you down with your own items. I was yeah. such a shithead. I did not care. I, if I encountered me today in Outlands, we, uh, there would be a boss shot created because of me. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just put it at that right there. Yeah. I was a terrible. I probably made people quit the game. I'm, I'm uh-huh. going to be completely honest. Yeah. But it was all fun. I was 13. I was a shit. I have an excuse. I was not a very good person. Um, but it was a lot of fun, man. It, it, hey, we all remember our fondest memories and what it got us into the game. Yeah. Me being a thief and a little bonus, like little tidbit here. I stole the very first Valorite Runic Hammer on the Atlantic server. And I stole it in Trammel. I stole it with 100% in-game mechanics, clicking steel, clicking the thing. I had convinced this dude that he was so great that he was like the best person ever that he had this hammer. Had 49 charges, came with 50. And these made vanquishing, supremely accurate, indestructible weapons at the time. Like uh, Okay, perfect weapons. Perfect weapons on the yeah. Valorant Runic Hammer. You could sell charges on the Valor Iron Hammer for a mil per. Oh and they boy. were a mil was going for like 50 to 100 bucks. Yeah. You could also join factions and bless the hammer for a month or bless the weapon that you made from the hammer. So, yeah, dude, I had a lot of fun. I was, I, I got rich because of it. Um, luckily, I had a disguise kit on. And, uh, you know, we just did what we had to do. He, he had no idea who you were. You were in his guild, weren't you? You were in his guild, uh, right? I joined. I made him join my guild. There you go. Yeah. And yeah. Then, <laughs> uh, you know, my, uh, slowly. Yeah. Stealthed my way over on another character. With a different name, with a different name. So he doesn't even know it's you. So you guys probably went farming later, didn't you? (laughs) I failed the first sale on the, on the the hammer. I failed. Yeah. He didn't know. Uh I still got the steal off. It was like when you go on and you miss a rope and I'm like, yeah, I'm so happy. Yeah. Yeah. That was a great time, man. So yeah, I'm sorry for anyone out there. Raf, man, ghost, um, uh, I know those two in particular, Raffman and Ghost. If you ever see this video, bro, I'm sorry. I <laughs> ruined your life with OSI Atlantic a little bit. <laughs> Dude, I, me, me and Beltane, it was the same thing, man. For whatever reason, retail, teenage years, online gaming, I, I had this, the sole purpose. I wanted people to rage so hard. Like, I agree with you. It was just something funny. I, if they were like, begging for whatever back i just thought it was great if they rage quitted uh, if they you know said they were going to quit the game it was like it it was cool to me i thought i thought that was a good thing i know it's shitty but i I, so i can definitely relate and now here we are you know both of us are just like the nicest people other than i do still shit in this game but it's yeah but you steal shit and you give it all away at the end yeah yeah I wouldn't steal from my own guilty, but I definitely would have back then. We used to same thing, you know, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd think that someone was AFK and we'd kill them at the bank and loot all their shit. And people would just be like, I just was killed at the bank. And we'd just sit there and be like, who could have done? Who did it? I'll go and kill them. (laughs) Yeah. It's just always, we'd run around looking for them with the rest of the guild. (laughs) Shit, man. But that's, I, I can relate to that. So, so you do still have an active OSI account on Atlantic. Um, I mean, do you still log on there, play at all? When's the last time you actually did anything in the game? You know, uh, I would say about three to four months ago, maybe a little bit longer. I do have a couple buddies and uh, a couple other streamers that actually are still active within that community. You actually know one of them, Waffles McGregor. Yeah, he uh, he still is doing a challenge over there, trying to accumulate wealth for himself as a personal goal without outside help. And uh, I've actually went over there maybe four months ago, and they run these dungeon events. Um, 
The last one was a Hithloth dungeon event. So you'd go in there and you would kill creatures within the dungeon and you would get um, reward points. And those reward points, when you turn in these artifacts, I, I forget, I think you might get artifacts from the monsters and then you turn those in and then you get reward points to buy things that they've put on a gear vendor outside of the dungeon. Okay. So that's they're, pretty they're much how the events out there. EM events, I think, right? They do those on the side. That is uh okay. that that's just like an event that they had in the game running probably like a month long. Gotcha. On top of that, they still run those uh EM events every now and then, uh usually like two a month, something like that. Yeah, because I, I know uh Epic Loot Gaming was was doing those. It, he'd he'd stream Sunday nights when they would do them and I'd log in and watch him uh, on his streams. Oh yeah, he's yeah. great. He's a great dude too. Yeah, and I, I do, man. I uh, I I miss Waffles when he would stream too. He he was fun. Uh, he still streams a little bit. I see him doing more EverQuest lately. EverQuest, yeah, EverQuest. I mean, I I watch him when he do when he does like Darkest Dungeon. I just he's a great dude. So he's cool, man. Yeah, he's really cool. He's very smart as well. Um, okay, so you you are military, right? Uh, Ura, there you go. Ura, right. once a marine, always a marine. So, I is it safe to say that you were able to play, you know, while you were you were uh, in the or well active duty, and then did they know that you played? Did your marine buddies play, or was um, it a secret? Okay, so in during the marine years, I kind of like got away from U boat just a tad bit. That was right around uh, two, I joined active duty in the Marines two thousand five. Mm-hmm. So I think Age of Shadows came out like 2003 or four, somewhere in that range. And that's when they did the you know, entire insurance and introduced Malas and Doom and all these yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I joined active duty and uh, I kind of, you know, got real busy within that with training and getting all my things done. And I didn't have a lot of time for UO. So I sporadically played a little bit, kind of kept up to guild, yeah. uh, kept up with my guild that I was a part of which is actually funny. I joined a guild prior to joining the Marines and I knew I was going to mer- be a Marine uh, 16 or 17 year old uh, me that had already signed up was inside like the pre boot camp program. Um, I joined a guild called LNR leather neck Raiders. And if you know anything about the Marines, you're a leather neck. And I was like, man, that's cool. And that was my decision making into that. So I became Part of LNR, which happened to be at the time the biggest Zerg guild on Atlantic server. Like, if you had a pulse, we record, we we recruited you. Like, uh-huh. go do the champ spawn. We got Reds to protect us. We got Death. We got Kamikaze. We got we got uh, Obsidian Knight. We got uh, Banana Split. Like, I'm remembering all these names of all these prominent PKers, and then we were fighting against the eBay Alliance, the hot uh, hot. DEI, they would be coming from different shards, Great Lakes, Sonoma. They were recruiting other shards to come here to defeat our LNR Zerg uh-huh. uh, because we had everything just like on farm, champ spawn, this like. And uh, another story again, Rathman, if you ever do see this dude, I know you had really awesome scripts. I was just faster than you looting that oak skull, bro. I'm, I was just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so man. yeah i didn't get to play a lot during my marine corps times uh because i was really busy with the training and i had actually uh started playing world of warcraft yeah yeah during that Dude. time and i re- like that was the other like you know the other big mmo of the time and i kind of got sucked into that world which pulled me away from uo yeah, uh too. a little bit and then of course but what is what happens right even with wow as great that it is and how long i played look at the game i'm back on now right i'm right yeah. back to uo that got right back to our core so i th- i think those two games i i'm playing both of them off and on for you know since since they both came out you know what i mean ultima mm-hmm. since it came out world of warcraft since it came out i've i've played them both since off and on i will say that i've played ultima Way more consistently um, since I came here onto uh, uh, Outlands, I haven't I haven't taken a break yet. And I think it's just the, the constant content, yeah, and like the always feeling of progression in the yeah. Outlands. Like you, the the the, the end game wasn't you know getting your character skills to one hundred or one twenty. You still yeah. always had that feeling of progression, either through PvP, earning points, getting a cool mount, upgrading your house, doing decoration, getting your aspect like. 
I've been playing for a year and a half and I'm just now getting into voting. Like, yeah, yeah. It's there's so fun. much to it. There's so much to it. And and just like you said, there's people that have been playing since the beginning of the server and they've only scratched the surface of certain things and, and whatnot. But I mean, speaking of that, I mean, what what actually got you into Outlands? Uh, I mean, you said a year and a half. Um, I mean, what what got you in and then what's, I guess, kept you? So there was a uh, a dungeon event going on in OSI. Um, I think it was like covetous i don't remember exactly what because i was just on the grind man i was i i stopped playing world of warcraft again right uh the last expansion i did was like wrath of the lich king okay. and then they started doing cataclysm and all these other things and that's kind of like i stopped playing that and i was doing a lot of xbox gaming like we already previously touched on i i lost my my mixer, what I was doing there and yeah. kind of like I, I wasn't streaming. I wasn't really doing anything, but that, that love for UO was there. So I was like, you know, let me go on Twitch. Let me type in UO here. And, uh, lo and behold, there's this fucking beautiful man, like doing UO. And it was like, his name was like pwn star 85 or something like that. So I, uh, I, I load up his stream and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just lurking. I'm lurking for a bit. I'm not gonna lie. I was, you know, I see the graphics and the new updated map. I'm like, is this really UO that I know? You know, and I was, I was hesitant. I was hesitant. I'm yeah, like, of course. But uh, man, it was just something about it, like the energy that you put off, the fun that you had used to do. Like you were doing at the time, you're doing the group loot runs. Uh, at the end of the night, you were doing the the stream giveaways. You were doing the uh, the standing PK runs. Like everything <laughs> that you were doing, dude, it was just like, I couldn't wait to watch. And it was getting me so invigorated. And you kind of like see the smile on my face right now because like I'm remembering how you talk, how you said you're talking to your friend about UO. And like, uh -huh. so at this time, right, I'm watching you. And then I go to my buddy Aggie that I play the game with like exclusively. I work with him real life. Uh -huh. I played OSI with him for the past 13 years. Um, and I'm, I'm going to him after work. I'm like, dude, I'm watching this guy phone star and uh, this new server. It's pretty cool, man. Like maybe we should go over there and like make a character or something. I, I, I don't know. Like I know, I know we're on OSI and cause he's pretty, you know, He'll, he'll kind of go where I go, but I kind of got to give him a little push like that a little bit, but I'm excited about it. Like I'm yeah. seeing you play. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, we could do some fun shit, man. I, I see good things happen for us. Like this looks fun, man. And maybe I can get my brother playing, get some of the old crew back. Like, cause we had a, a really fun family group. My dad is 73. You know, what he loves to do it all. And, and, and you just go out and fish. And he's like, <laughs> fish all day. Yeah. He, and he named his man. Old old man Jack or something. That's all he did. He just he just fishes, dude. Just fishes so everybody awesome. my mom, she loved to play. She loved to just be a tailor. She used to go out just skin uh she liked to go out, wool the sheet, uh, go make the yarn the cloth. She did everything, dude. And it was just like fun, man. We played yeah. there as a family. Trinsic was our home base. And uh so I'm watching you play. And I know I'm getting a long a little long winded, but no, you're good. You're just having so so much fun, dude. I'm like, dude. I got to join. I, I got to. So I, I download the server. I get on Outland. And I'm still lurking. I haven't chatted, Pwn. I still, yeah. I'm being that, that, that lurking asshole because I, you know, I'm apprehensive a little bit. I'm being typical, typical me. I'm feeling it out. And I'm in shelter, right? Shelter at the time, they think they had the skill cap was 70. Yeah. Uh, cores and distills, you needed 12 cores. Yeah. Six distills, MCD. I needed I need Bard Code. The Bard Codex had just just released. Okay. Uh, land expansion had just came out. Yeah. So I was joining at a, at a at a really good time. But I was poor. My buddy Aggie didn't join yet. So I'm like, all right, now's the time. <laughs> Hail Pwn Star, dude. Hail Adventure. <laughs> you know, I introduced myself, kind of make myself known, man. It was time. And uh yeah, from that moment forward, dude, I just was always in there trying to like anytime you'd be streaming dude because honestly you i i want to make you blush you were the reason that you that i came back to you oh why the reason i joined outlands uh and and then once not only you bringing me in just the community as a whole you see it uh not only on your stream i saw it on your stream i see it when i'm streaming uh, it, it i don't think there's any other 
online, and I think every single person on the Pony Guys has said this. There's no other online community that does that. Like even in PUBG on Mixer, like you go to try to integrate with other people and talk with people or like do any promotion or whatever. They're like, they're like totally different. Like, Oh fuck you. Get yourself promoting piece of shit ass off my fucking channel. And it's like, nah, yeah. dude, I love you. Oh, I just wanted to survive and I wanted to, I wanted to grow. So if you're streaming you and you're making this game popular, you know, adopting that mindset, man, it's like, right. Everything there, you, the drive, the community, everything just push me into the outlands and as a whole buying in, man, it was, it, it, I don't regret it one bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can, I can remember you, the loot trains and you being there for them and, and getting all the loot and getting excited about it. That, I do miss doing the loot trains. Um, probably ought to bring them back one day. I keep saying that, but it, the problem is, is I, I just like to steal so much I mean, <laughs> basically basically when i when the red hand thief came out and the thief codex and everything i mean stealing was always there beforehand but that just kind of motivated me to level something and then i leveled it and i was like okay thieving is so much fun and i i've always played a thief um in, in whatever uo i've done but i never really did it well until here on outlands which honestly i never really played ultima well until you owe forever and then that was really the only time i ever did good like in, in retail and all the other servers dude i was dog shit man i was <laughs> dog shit just like i never really got established anywhere i never really understood much or whatever and uh I, you know i would try to be some awesome pvp -er and didn't never take the time to make my macros or anything you know just stupid stuff and oh yeah uh, and now here though it's just like everything comes together and I just really enjoy it. And, and I, I know exactly what you mean. Like the community is all extremely welcoming and it's like, you know, everybody wants more people to stream. And I think it's, well, I know for me and I, and I think understanding from other people, it's, it's the same thing. It's like, if I'm not streaming, you know, who else is streaming that's promoting UO. And so we want, we want more people to be promoting Ultima online outlands or just Ultima online in general um you know 24 7 ideally right um, more because, eyes on you is the better exactly right because the more uo grows ultimately the more your stream's gonna grow the more your youtube channel whatever it is that you do out there so um you know having that 24 7 uh publicity for ultima online is 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 key i think 100 percent, and that's where i think you know for me especially if i find out somebody's a streamer i'm just like oh so that name and i just want to watch them and then be able to like you know, speak on their behalf of how good they are at streaming and, and what I like about their stream. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, man. And, and it's genuine, genuine people actually going in and actually watching and getting to know people. You know, it's not just yeah. that, that fakeness for sure. Yeah. 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 It's nice. So when, when you did get into Outlands, I mean, you know, your friend, did he end up joining? Did he end up playing Outlands ever? Um, and then, if he did, or even if he didn't, I mean, what, what was kind of your path of, uh, of playing, <laughs> but, uh, what was kind of your path of, of playing outlands and, uh, you know, when you, you know, what did you do? So I was on there for like five days and dude, I was, I was unrelenting at work. I was like, bro, got my bard. I'm smacking some stuff, bro. Come on. I got my bard. I can, I can piece things. Yeah. Cause I played bar for like, 20 plus years on osi man i i just i love parting man like the mechanics they're just fun it's interactive you feel like you're part of the game right yeah so uh after badgering him for five days aggie eventually makes his character makes his dexter gets his little mage joey bag of donuts that you guys have seen we both uh eventually uh join path uh, the funny story with that, though, I do want to get to the origin story of Path and why we joined it. Okay. Yeah, it seems a little odd for you. <laughs> yes. 13-year-old me, thieving shithead. 35-year-old me, not thieving shithead. Anti-thieving, anti-red. How do you get that transformation? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Two things. Well, like multiple things. One, being a Marine. Um, you know, I just, you got, you get, you get instill these, these value cores, right? Like honor, courage, commitment. And, uh, yeah, man, it feels really shitty when you, when you grow up and you actually like work 
and you buy things and then like the things that you had worked on and they get stolen from you. It really sucks. <laughs> so uh-huh. I didn't want to inflict that same amount of grief um, onto other people in a, in a really old wizard game. Um, I had already done that in my younger, my younger years. I was like, you know what? I want to see the other swing of things, man. I'm, you know, I'm more mature. I understand people are playing this game, um, you know, to chill more. And like me, I work, I get off work. I just want to come home, relax, kill a few dragons, man. You know, like not yep. worry about things. So I wasn't ever going to be the red hand or, or the thief or, or the PK. And another thing that had driven me to path is for some God forsaken reason, all the shithead thieves in this server would not leave me alone for the first week and a half on this server. <laughs> they were stealing my, my GM, my vendor bought loot. They were stealing my skinny knife. They were stealing my everything, bro. I was having a terrible time. So I'm playing one night with my buddy Aggie. We're in Ossuary 2. Um, killing Lick Maguses, actually. No aspect. We were cross healing. I had yeah. my peace making going. And it's going pretty good. You know, we're making 500 coin per and, you know, working towards our aspect. Like, we had to get a lot of cores out of distills. We meet this guy. Tyr Antilles. T-Y-R Antilles. And he's in Path. <laughs> and uh, I'm like... I'm a little RP at my heart. I'm like, hell adventure. Cause I was going after the pwn. Like I was doing the pwn star <laughs> thing, man. And uh, he responds back and we start chatting. He's like, do you want to go down and hunt the depths of the next da 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 da? And I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's go. Aggie, yeah. we'll join up with this dude. So we ended up joining up with this dude. Went down to Ossuary three slash four, right with the Jack of Spirits, the high arcs down okay. the stairs. Like, it was scary, dude. Everything was doing like 50% of my health. And it's like, oh my God, I don't know. And shit was flying. And I'm learning abilities. I don't know where I'm scary, dude. I don't, but I was making good money. I was making a friend with this guy, Tier. And then he ended up messaging me on Discord. He's like, dude, you guys are cool. If you need some help, path, uh, because they don't like actively recruit. Like you kind of uh-huh. just meet these path people within the dungeons and uh, you see what they do. And they'll, you know, Hey man, we're anti red, anti thief. Do you want to join? You might get a tour of the player ran town. And uh, I just came to talk to this dude and got to like know the history of Path behind it. And yeah, man, went for the tour. Love the player ran town. I, I love the mentality of what they stood for on the server, fighting back a little bit against the injustice of being murdered and uh, the injustice of all the thieves. Cause my loot, not yeah. even my loot. I'm talking ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. they're still in my vendor bought ding ding. Yeah. Bro. So I joined Path and I'm like, I need some friends because this is bullshit. And uh yeah, man, met Baj. Yeah. Yeah. And uh I told Baj all my troubles. Basha. You guys all know Basha. Oh yeah. And that's how the thieves bane was born because every single night I got on, I said Baj. Let's go kill some fucking thieves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, dude, we would go for hour, going to Anchor's Rest, going to town, going to the dungeons, and we would yeah. murder every single shit thief. Yeah. And I found great pleasure in that. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I found extreme pleasure from every single time they ding the ling ding. Oh shit, stole my loot. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> and I felt justified in retribution. And uh yeah, man. It was just from that point forward, hanging out with Basha, hanging out with Aggie, leveling my aspect, getting a little bit of help from the guild, and uh, just starting the systems in UO, man. I started as the archer, and you had to be in stance to level your codex, so that sucked. Yep. And uh, yeah, man, I it, just had beginning fun times. I remember just getting my shit stolen and just looking forward to when Baj got on and just yeah. kick the shit out of these, man. I, I loved it when Baj, I mean, Baj, I'm seeing him more often again, which is great, but I, I really miss when he was very active and he was just, you know, he'd, he'd walk the halls RPing and then he'd be like up to any trouble tonight. 
and I'd be like, no, sir. And he goes, what's that in your pocket? You know what I mean? And just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Just the, the intense fun role playing <laughs> and it would always end up with a chase or, you know, and, uh, I, I miss right when SSC, when that, that expansion came out and they did the whole thief hunter ideas and stuff. And a lot of people were role playing it. You know, you had him, you had SSC security, you had, uh, I mean, just a bunch of random people, Robin hood, um, all these people, man. And, and it was always this great <laughs> role playing chase Pulma PD. I mean, the list goes on with all those. Oh yeah. Guys. And, uh, I, I really miss, miss that, uh, with, with, with the, all those people were active. Um, but that's great, man. That's, that's great. And so, um, any, any like crazy stories that you can think of as far as like, uh, you know, chasing, chasing reds around somebody that, that gotcha that you guys ran through all night. I mean, I don't know. Oh man, we've had so many great patrols. I'll go with a more recent one because all right, let's be real. Right. If anyone's been paying attention to the U Outlands Discord official, right? Everyone's saying there, there's this huge red problem, which, uh-huh. you know, at times, certain points of the day in certain dungeons, sure, they might get swept with, you know, six or seven face reds or sin reds or peck reds or, you know, we got these little ganking groups. Sure. Well, past lately, uh, one of our great officers, Nacho, has great has created a group called the belligerents. Okay. What we do, we go down farming looking for fights. We're not uh-huh. down there on PVM templates. We're all grouping together on a PVP template, bull crapping, having a good time, shooting the shit in Discord, waiting for Harry Mack, waiting for Bappy, waiting. For these dudes, I think they're going to roll up with their gang group. And then as soon as they get to us, bro, we turn on them and we be chasing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been the hunters, the hunted. And it's been fucking fantastic, man. That's good. Clearing the dudes out of the dungeon. Like, you were streaming uh, s- Saturday. You said, Red's down in Osuary. Nah, they weren't down there very long. We went <laughs> down there. Harry Mack and crew. They <laughs> that. They felt the power of path within moments. And uh, you go, oh, they're down in malls. Nah, they felt the power (laughs) of that. Dude, we've been going out. And that's why I say more recently, you guys will be seeing path in in the dungeons. If you see us farming and we're fighting reds, guys, don't run. Join in. You might just find out you could fight a little bit back and you're going to feel that in your heart. Like, fuck that. I didn't have to run. I got a little bit of revenge. Yep. Fuck that red. Yep. I, you know, it, that you said something really important there and that's, you know, fight back. I, and also you were talking about people, you know, saying there might be a red problem or whatever. And you know what, it, what I think happens, well, I know what happens because I play the game and, and I, <laughs> I understand it too, but is that, you know, I might, let's say I play for three hours tonight in that three hours. I might run into two reds, right? Mm-hmm. I might get I might get killed by two reds. I might run into two reds. I might kill two reds. Who knows, right? Um, and then maybe the next night, I in three hours, I might see five or whatever. But the thing is, is that in that time span, wh- I guarantee if I've been farming that whole time, I'm going to end up making more money than what I actually lost in that one trip. And I think what happens is just that some people really, really dislike dying. Like it just sucks for them really bad Mm -hmm. and, and and to get killed by another player and lose whatever, whether it be a loadout, whether it be a loadout plus full loot or whatever, it just really angers them. And so they are like, Oh God, there's a red problem. And they want to say it out loud to some people. And when in reality, personally, I don't think there's a red problem at all. (laughs) I I just think that, um, you know, it's, it's a, somebody dies, they like to go into general chat and be like, oh, there's too many reds or punish reds. How come they can melt me? And, you know, I've, I've had this discussion so many times, but I mean, we, oh, all yeah. get, we all get 720 skill points. How we decide to use them is up to us. Just like how you said, you go down there and you farm in your PVP template ready for a red. You know, I, I like to play my PVM slash PVP summoner. And then when somebody attacks me, because I always play in red hand, even if I'm on my blue character and mm-hmm. like I fight back and I win a lot of times. And, it, and I think that if more people would 
spend more time learning how to defend themselves and uh, not try to glass cannon PVM, but also understand that this is actually a PVP game, then mm -hmm. uh, they they wouldn't they would understand that there actually isn't a red problem. It's just a it's a me problem more than anything, really. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, and there's lots of things, uh, personal things that people could do, like yeah. don't farm for so long. Uh, don't put yourself in a position where you're going to lose so much. Uh, farm near a red gate if you're close to a level up. Farm, uh, farm it uh, in an area that has escapes. Don't box yourself in. Don't put yourself in positions where one wall and you're done. Yeah, no, that's huge. It, it just all those little things, rather than just like you know, focused on gold per hour, gold per hour, gold per hour, gold per hour, and then it's like, oh, I died and now I'm upset, like because I wasn't watching my back in a game that you need to watch your back. <laughs> absolutely but, uh, yeah but let's 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 change uh let's change t uh routes for a second here i mean what what really you know even back with mixer right i mean what got you into streaming and then also you know even when mixer shut down and you you jumped over to twitch and i guess started here <laughs> on outlands i mean what made you decide to start streaming here on twitch and outlands and all that so walk me through your streaming story from the beginning so the original like <sighs> I just wanted something more to do. Um, I had this free time. I was playing games. Um, my son actually was really big into like making some YouTube videos and trying to uh, establish himself like, you know, a young, you know, he's seven, eight at the time. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go and buy a few things. And uh, I started to set up like, basic real basic primitive cheap streaming stuff on another computer and why he was doing that i was like you know what i'm gonna try to like show him support so i was doing the mixer thing um and i was actually playing PUBG with like a lot of my marine buddies that's how like i was able to still communicate and keep in contact with them even though we're on different sides of the state or maybe they're in okinawa and i'm you know i'm still here so that was like that journey and while we we're playing my dad and my brother always were like bro you're always on the game why don't you just stream like do something with it and i'm like you're probably right so that's when i started doing the mixer so it was like a combination trying to show my son what's possible and being pushed by family so i did the mixer i was doing good there um it got you know went through its whole acquisition and twitch took popular streamers and acquired and mixer was no longer a thing and then i was like i had probably like a year off of streaming again too i was like i don't want to rebrand myself i didn't really want to like do everything again and like it, it just felt like a lot so i just stopped and uh like i said man like a year later i started watching your videos and getting into YouTube and watching more Twitch streamers. And um, I still wasn't like in the mindset of actually streaming, but it was just like everybody kind of like just pushing again on my family. They're like, Oh, you're back to playing UO. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm on this new server. Uh, Cause we were playing pool together as a family too. And uh, at pool nights, they would be asking me questions and then I just got kind of, kind of tired of answering them. So I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to stream. And uh, yeah, man, it, it just, I got on Twitch. I had like four followers, five followers. I, I, I looked at the camera, man. I, I, the one night when I first, before I hit stream for before the very first stream, and I, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to give the reenactment here real quick. I literally, I just kind of like looked at the camera before I started. I'm like, are you ready for this shit again, dude? <laughs> Cause I already know what it's like when you first start. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at myself in the mirror. I'm like looking yeah. at myself, my OBS. And I'm like, are you ready for this shit again? And then like, I, I went live, bro. And, uh, yeah, man, exactly what my team, my, ugh, my streams title always says. When I go live, my purpose of going live isn't to make money, right? Because, like, I can just go work, like, one hour and I make more money than I do on Twitch with ad revenue and things like that, right? So, it's it's not the money. We're, we're not doing this for the money. It's for the passion that UO gives, right? 
I love UO down to its core, man. The game, it just lets you go into your imagination. It's the ultimate sandbox. If you want to be a beggar with 45 begging skill that herds sheep and tames cows that can kind of beat them down with a mace and maybe cook them a little bit with cooking, yeah. you can. You yeah. can do anything. There was nothing that told you that you were wrong in this game, and that's what's so pure and beautiful about it. You literally get to do whatever you want. So along with that journey, I noticed there wasn't a lot of like bards um, streaming uh, content. And generally, it's, you know, a pretty lame um, template, not very fun to play, right? But I make that shit fun, dude. I make it fun. I make it interesting. I try to make it as interactive as possible. And uh, I just play and I stream, like my title says, slaying mobs, man. I love. I, I just want to get up. I want to kill a few mobs. And I want to make some friends, dude. I want to bring people into the game. I want eyes on you, oh from someone like me that maybe had played for 23 years, hasn't played, gets to find a great streamer like yourself, Pone, gets to find a great streamer like like Job or, or Jason's or any of these guys that were promoting and actively streaming UO at the time. And that brought me in. And all I want to do is just a just a little bit of a little bit of my part. Yeah. Right. I love UO. I don't want it to die. I want it to grow. I know how to stream well, I would say, like fairly entertaining. I agree. Um, yep. And it takes a lot out of you, right? Yeah. So that's why I don't do it as much as other people. Yeah. But just to feel like I'm doing just a little part to help the game that I've loved and I and that we all still do love over 25 years. Like that's the reason I do this. I I, I stream in. Yeah. No, I, I I can agree with you, especially on the part of like uh it, it does, it takes a lot out of you. Um I some of these people that can do these eight hour, 10 hour streams, five days a week. I'm like, what, how, do, how you are wild. <laughs> you madman. Like I, mad you know, I, I do a couple, two hour streams a week, two to three, uh, during the weekday. And then I do a, a five hour on Saturdays and Saturday, my old friend whiskey, or I guess <laughs> here, but you know what I mean? He helps me oh, out yeah. a lot on Saturdays. Oh, uh, are and we doing, I enjoy are we, that a ton. It, it really makes it fun. <laughs> but, uh, okay. <laughs> and uh he uh well you know what let me get my sake here and uh yeah might as well you know bottle. we were right there at that that little you're break muted. point you're right muted now. we're doing pretty good you're muted right now oh you're i'm not. muted that's me we're good yeah we're good that was me excellent so. i think i saw you i saw you grabbing something cheers paul man yeah, cheers. so exactly what i'm saying man making friends brother That sake, sake Saturday. <laughs> That's what got me in trouble earlier, and why I took a nap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> taking them shots, man. They get to, but uh, man, it, yeah, it's it, it is really neat, man. And and also, I'd say you know the biggest thing that I've enjoyed the most is seeing all the newer people start streaming, more people start streaming. Um, you know, I think when I came here to Outland specifically. Let me rewind actually you go forever the first person i ever watched stream was blacklisted and i used to oh, watch dude. the shit out of blacklisted on you great forever. and uh he, he was just he was always a lot of fun he's just he's so like surgical with his pks he's i would say he's the best solo pk ever in an ultima online without a doubt i hope i can be a quarter as good as him um but he's he's just phenomenal and um then when he came over to outlands it was the same thing it's just like you know, he'll he'll do a 3v1 and there are three Dexers and somehow he pulls it off and kills two of them and gets away with two of their loot and gets out and yeah, might even kill the third one. And there's clips to prove it. Now he's been posting TikToks and all that stuff. I, uh, you know, it's it's pretty wild what he does. But I used to watch him a ton. And then over here on Forever, it was him and uh, Trammy Surprise and Solrix. And all three of them were PKs. And I think I think... With that, and there's nothing wrong with BK and shit, I'm about to be doing it myself, but is that um, people thought that the only way to stream Ultima and make it entertaining was if you PK'd, right? Mm -hmm. Or or you stole. Trainee stole a lot too. And, you know, while that is entertaining for people, I, I think it's more, I know it is, um, and uh, a lot of the newer streamers are proof of that, is that 
is it's and yourself, right? It's more about the personality and the the like you said, making friends and connections and and things like that. I mean, shit, man, I've been meeting up with some of the stream or people um, in the community in real life, and they're some of the coolest people that I've ever met in my life, man. Oh yeah, and and, and it's just those huge connections, man, um, that are made versus just like you don't have to be good. You don't have to be good at the game. You don't have to know the game. All you have to do is be able to smile at the camera and chat with people and and have a great time because that's all really people are looking for is just somebody to uh, chat with, right? And and oh, yeah. watch them play and talk to them about the same game that they're loving and playing and enjoying. And then also, like we keep talking about, is you know encouraging others to stream and and play this game and and uh, you know all those things help it grow. So. Um, so, so that that's kind of you know what got you into streaming and all that stuff. I mean, do, do you have any like super memorable stories or, or anything from streaming? Um, anything that like sticks out? You know, I mean, I guess it's been like you said a year and a half here in Outlands, and then how long did you stream on Mixer? Like a year maybe or something or longer? Yeah, I was on Mixer for about a year, and then you know I've been on Outlands for a year and a half, but I didn't start streaming until August probably. Okay of of this previous year so i'll be coming up on my my twitch i think i'm at nine months right now yeah nine or ten months on twitch right now so i'll be coming up to my year uh here pretty soon but uh you know memorable uh memorable story hmm i will say i wasn't streaming at this time but i'm gonna let you guys in on something that happened to me and somebody had to talk me off the ledge and you outlands. Bum, bum, bum. All right. So young, young, young Ganthrone, young Ganthrone, just tier two aspect level. <laughs> this guy, so naive. He didn't know shit about the server. Mm-hmm. At the time, you had to put your aspect cores into your aspect home by pulling the aspect home out of wherever it was secured yeah, into yeah. your backpack. Mm-hmm. And then you had to like add them from that. You still have to do that with collectible cards, but which they should change that. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe it's coding. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I had about uh, five to 10 of each core. You know, it wasn't anything impressive. It was just what I had collected throughout playing. If you're tier two I, aspect, that's a lot, man. <laughs> You know? Yeah, like I was yeah. just like it was just from what I was gathering and playing because me and my buddy we had pooled. I was collecting all of the cores and the aspects for upgrades. He was collecting like materials, raw materials, because we that's how we did it until we had a house. And the yeah. end rooms sucked; they didn't get good until like later. Um, so I had just got enough money, and we had just got a really cheap we mined our asses off we sold ingots and we bought a cheap ghetto courtyard so i was moving everything from the bank from my ghetto court from my bank to the house and we had ship gated into the ghetto courtyard and at the time you couldn't um let's just say we're dumb we could still do you could you could detect but you could stealth through houses okay uh-huh. Someone had followed. I don't even remember his name because if I do, I would st- I would farm you, mother. But if he followed me through the gate, yeah, followed me upstairs to that little, really crappy stairwell that sucks in those ghetto courtyards. And uh, as I was putting away my stuff, he yoinked my fucking aspect home. Yeah, <laughs> with all my aspect cores and all my distills in it, or my extracts at the time. And dude, that that was that was utterly devastating, and another reason why I hate thieves on this server again. More reason for me to hate thieves and be in path and hunt you mother down. Um, so yeah, I uh, got my aspect items home stolen. I was about to quit right then and there, dude. I'm like, fuck this server. This is bullshit. You shouldn't be able to fucking be able to steal. I was I was mad. I was raging. But as you guys all know, I'm gonna give him a shout out. The Marion 30 linker uh, in path. Uh, he, dude, awesome guy. Got like one of my closest buddies in path, Turkish player, companion over in the Discord, down to down to earth. He's like, I'm, he's talking me off the ledge. He's like, 
dude, dude, come, come, come to Prov, man. He like he buys me another aspect item. He's like, "What'd you lose, man?" He wanted to give me cores back and all this shit. Yeah. And eventually, I I just got the tone from him. I didn't get any cores or distills, and then I just I learned. I I said never again. <laughs> trap boxes, trap pouches, fucking reveal. I religiously i go home i know i got a secure courtyard i use 500k to wipe my room uh -huh. Uh -huh. every single time i'm home f12 detected and f12 detected and it's it's ritual now i will never ever oh, have any stole anything valuable ever stolen from me again yeah fuck you thieves <laughs> <laughs> it only takes once right and if it happens it twice once. then shame on you man you know what i mean exactly yeah i i so i've had because you can dock like from our boathouse, by the way, you can, you can undock onto that, that courtyard. Right? Straight into the dock. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've, I've got a whole bunch of people that have marked rooms at my house, a whole bunch. And, uh, it, it is pretty common that I, uh, I, I, I recall back and there's somebody <laughs> hidden right there on my dock somewhere, just waiting <laughs> for me to, to screw up. So, um, it, it definitely <laughs> happens a lot. And, yeah, that detected and thing, it helps a ton. It helps a ton. I'm glad that it is, uh, you know, wide, you know, uh, house wide or whatever, because it saves your ass as long as you use it, right? As long as mm -hmm. you use it. But, okay, so, I mean, it, it, what kind of goals do you have for, you know, uh, for streaming? Um, you know, your stream specifically, uh, you know, like upgrades coming soon <laughs> or, or, you know, anything like that, any ideas um, without spilling the beans, if you don't want to. Um, well, as you see today, uh, and every one of these Sunday streams, uh, ultimately, it's just it's just about getting on, having a good time, uh, making some friends, talking with people, getting to know the community, and uh, getting new eyes on the game. Um, always trying to produce some type of new content or something that maybe other players haven't been able to experience and they're intimidated by. So like, okay, team maps. Thank you, buddy. T maps, right? I see all these T maps sitting around on vendors, and I'm like, I'm just wondering, just do these T maps, guys. It's not that hard. So that was an idea five months ago, and I'm like, let's start doing T maps on stream, man. Like, yeah. and that kind of took off. And then now this boating thing, I honestly, I, I had no interest in the ocean. I, I, I always want to do it, but the stories that I've heard. It's intimidating. You need money. You need this. You need a boat. It's the entry cost is so high. Well, lo and behold, I did win the houseboat. I put five hundred thousand in every single houseboat lottery. Okay, I got it. I got you know. I was so happy. I did. I wasn't even playing UO Outlands at the time. I was uh like playing, hanging with the family, and I get message. I look at my Discord later, like twenty messages, like dude. I'm like, oh man, cool. So I got on there. I got the houseboat. Got into boating. Bam. I did boating today. I did a tutorial. I did all week off stream, humiliating myself, getting sunk by Wizard, getting sunk by Captain Scooby Dooby, GG, the sin people running through. Yep. The oceans are hectic, right? Just don't, yep. you know, take the game for what it is. Don't don't be too serious about it. And that's again all the tips and the tricks that I've learned. I try to convey on the stream. Yeah. And that's all I'm gonna keep on trying to do. Finding new unique things, maybe switching up to week to week. Cause I'm not, you know, you got, you do got the steady viewership, but again, making new friends, there's new people entering. And so if they got eyes, maybe, uh, you know, that's why I always try to show breaking down. How do you do this with the cartography? How do you find the map? How do you do this? It might be a, a smaller intro, but then next time I go on boating, I can do a quick tutorial and maybe go out and do a bigger, a bigger boat and show the next step, you know? Yeah. So That's always good. trying to create new content um, and just bring people to UL, man. I don't think any personal goals for the stream, honestly, they'll come as they, they'll come as they're supposed to, yeah. right? Uh, people that want to be there are going to be there. Uh, for my stream personal goals, though, I do want to get a green screen. I do want to create some backgrounds. I was talking to a couple artists to create custom uh, artwork, maybe start doing the Twitch payouts towards that. And eventually, eventually, I want to build a computer on stream. Um, That's awesome. I don't want to give too much away, but I want to build a computer on stream and uh, eventually have a separate computer uh, for my son to start streaming with. 
kind of like uh, I'm sure you guys have seen him, Bonio and his son. Yeah, I think that's really cool. Uh, that's another person I wish streamed a bunch more because I really enjoy him and his son. They just run around murdering the people. interaction, right? Yeah, it's, it's it, very it's, fun to see and unique, right? Yep. It's very fun to see. Yep. And of course, they have that accent. <laughs> they have that accent. It's just it's perfect, man. And uh, you know, they do pretty good PK and people too. I think it's it's pretty awesome, actually. Um, run, I do, son, run. I got you out, son. Yeah. Yeah. And and then, you know, I, I notice, you know, your your son actually interacts in chat uh, time to time, uh, doesn't he? Yeah. I oh, yeah. He's really void. Cool. He's, he's a void 28 over there on Twitch. He yeah. hasn't been as much. You know, he's yeah. been abandoning his old his old man a little bit, yeah. but uh, <laughs> he's loyal to his dad. You know, he's got his own he? life, his own, his own little buddies and friends like that. But yeah. he's always wanting to have been interested in asking about playing uo and things like that so maybe yeah. eventually get him his own little thing um i'm gonna need a whole separate computer because i think yeah. the way that the ips work he can play yeah. he just i can never like uniquely log on any of my accounts so maybe we can get together and outlands that way i don't know how the permissions I think, are we'll i think see. you can i just think you won't be able to go into a dungeon together if the ip is the same we'll uh, figure one yeah, way or another I know. Way. Yeah. yeah, I wait. Um, I I let's see. How old is he? He's thirteen. Yeah. Okay. So I want to say that's about the age I started playing Ultima. That's and my I, age, right there, yeah. man. Thirteen. Shed. Shed. Are you thirty-seven? Well, he won't be a shed thief. He's gonna. He's a good boy, man. He wants to, go, <laughs> he wants to make yeah. like a necro. He wants to be like yeah. someone in the undead, you know. And I that's said that's cool. pretty good, dude. Yeah. Are you? How old are you? I'm thirty-seven. I am thirty-five. Okay, so we're we're roughly the same age. So yeah, yeah. And and I can remember, I you know, I got to play with my dad, and it was just the, it was the coolest thing ever, man. You know, and and that that bond that me and him still have because we've played video games together so much. You know, and oh yeah. It's funny we go we go to family events, and it's like me and him are just sitting there talking about video games the whole time, and. The rest of the family has no idea what we're talking about, but we, we're just talking about. Oh, yeah, but you have that bond, and that's yeah. going to be a lifelong thing that you guys will always be able yep. to have, you know. And that's that's special. Yeah, it really is, man. So that's that's awesome. Um, all right, so let's let's talk about the. You know, we we've talked a little bit about it, but I mean, what what's your opinion on the community as a whole of Outlands? Not just like the community in the stream. I mean, that could be part of it, but I mean, you know, also, you know the 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 rest of the people the, the assholes even just you know who, who just the community as a whole the staff uh the streamers everything in between and all around uh I, I have a unique view on that right okay because even if you're an asshole i still like you man like everyone has their own personality their own thing yep. uh, i i'm i'm i guess i i'm versed well in Shun Tzu's Art of War, I would rather make it, uh, a friend rather than an enemy. Yeah. So, um, you PK me, I laugh it off. Hey, man, good stuff, bro. Hopefully you got some good loot. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, I, I tried to escape. Hopefully I gave you a good chase, gave you a good fight. Hey, let, let, me just say, let me just say that that right there is why you don't get stream sniped, is because of that. And, and because I've seen it in the past where streamers come and they get pk'd and they just start getting so upset man or they'll the call the stream snipe they be like you stream sniping son of a little penis man you know just things like that and then what ends up happening is exactly what you said trolls want that and guess what dude if they weren't sniping before they are now and it is going to be your entire stream from then on so you got two choices one is act how you do and make fun content out of it and possibly turn them into your friend or two, make them want to stream snipe you because you called them out on it and you're you're trying to get your whole chat against them on it. Because yes. that's what will happen, guaranteed. Yes, there that's your two options. You explained it perfectly well. And that yeah. you know, uh if it happens, like you say, Pone, we we're streaming, dude. Right. Yes, it's, it's our it, fault. It, it's, it's our TLS. fault. It's TLS. Is it though? Is it though? I mean, like <laughs> let's be our real fault, man. we're it's putting our ourselves out there man yes. so like it is what it is yep make fun of it make 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 those enemies into your friends man i've yeah. learned fusion of fights is better than actually fucking throwing that fist brother yeah yeah so, so, so uh, back you know, on it sorry but yeah <laughs> I, I take that approach to it man yeah. i have fun with it i don't let i don't let like you said the community outside of just the people that watch twitch the stream snipers 
uh, I don't really go into the general discord too much because I, 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 I have too many other things going on in my life. I got my own discord. There's already all of these other, other streamers discords that I try to uh, communicate in. I probably could do a little bit better job of, you know, at least talking over there. But um, yeah, dude, the community is just fantastic, dude, no matter what. And if you didn't have people on both sides of the spectrum, you know, the shit talk inside the PVP channel, the shit talk in the, the ships PVP, the back and forth banner within the general chat, the awesome pictures that people post on the home disc, uh, the home deco, which by the way, we've already mentioned Amish. You need to come deco me and pwn stuff. Stop. He, he said, stop. pay me. He said, pay me. So we will, he's up we'll pay you it. handsomely. Amish. You, <laughs> yeah. Cornfield Jesus. We will absolutely <laughs> pay you. Cornfield so, Jesus. um, yeah, man, it's just everybody, dude. Everybody serves a purpose or a role, and uh, I love everybody, man. I don't try to, I don't try to hate on anybody. Yeah. And if I've given that impression to where I don't like you, uh, maybe I was drunk. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I hundred percent agree with you, man. I think there does need to be that balance of there needs to be the good guys, and there also needs to be the assholes. Um, because if it's nothing but just good times, and you know, it's just like, eh, you know, it just kind of gets. Well, look at me on stream. I I yeah. start turning. Huh, huh, huh. I start to. I can play it up. You know, you yeah. get those moments. Of, I I turn it like you do. I turn it into content. I make it yeah. bigger or funner than the moment is. Yeah. And then ultimately, that's all, what are we trying to do? We're providing entertainment and providing eyes to bring people right. into the game that we love. If, so, if I stole a command core or even an antiquity or whatever that I'm going to give away anyways, and some guy decides he wants to jump on and snipe me or, or or chase me down or kill me or whatever and talk shit about it then it's like okay wh what have i really lost though nothing yeah. you know what i mean and and even so like i personally feel like streaming it, i'm not there for my own gain on my character i think if you're streaming and you're trying to build your own character up and that's the sole thing i mean it's on you it's your stream but i mean for me personally like I'm there to entertain, right? I'm not, yep. I mean, me gaining experience on my mastery chain is just a little extra that comes That's along the gravy, with streaming. Right? Yeah, it's the gravy. There you go. But I mean, really, I'm just there to entertain because that entertains me. You know what I mean? Like I love getting those messages after the stream. of like, damn, dude, great stream today. And I'm just like, yeah. I love those too, man. It makes you feel good. Like, dude, I, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it, man. I got, I got messages yeah. today just saying, dude, thank you for uh, showing me some boating. Like yeah. I, I didn't understand how the mechanics and now I feel like I can go out maybe on a little boat and do some stuff. Right. You know, that makes me feel good. Like I accomplished something. I helped yeah. somebody in that day. You contributed to the community that's doing really well. I agree with you hundred percent. So what, like, what, what are some things that, you know, I mean, we're, we're halfway through the year right now um, and they've already implemented a lot, everything from like, you know, the uh, new items for your paper doll. Um, they're mm -hmm. incorporating better movement for outside of your paper doll with those items. And they're uh, talking about all the new weapons that are coming and land and, and things like that. And they've done so much already, but I mean, what are, what are some things you'd like to see in the next, you know, six months, uh, the rest of 2023 and, and maybe even beyond there from outland specifically. Outland specifically, I'm really excited for the land expansion that's been teased because they're still so, dude, our, it's such a thriving community. Yeah. We have so, we have so many people that want to be part of the world, right? Yeah. And in rooms are fantastic. Do not get me wrong. I'm not knocking on in rooms, but when you get that house, okay, you get that house. And you see other people running around and miners and people hitting the trees. It's alive, right? Yeah. You're part, you're part of the world, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that uh, the land expansion to get new players, some, some, some housing, some new, some spread out. Cause the game is growing at an exponential yeah. rate, right? Yeah. The dungeons are packed. Uh, People are are, are are everywhere. We just need a little bit more areas. The the, the dungeon, the level four expansions, that's helped immensely spread people out, pulling group play down to Moz 4. Every single time you keep on making these expansions, you're just you're hoping to where that cluster problem where the, the population, when, when you first started being a thousand or whatever it was, wasn't as bad. But now at 3,000 and you still have the same dungeons, you're that's you know a 200 percent uptick you yep. need something to balance that out so the land expansion some more dungeons some challenging things 
um, I'm really excited for uh, mostly. And then quality of life changes, right? Uh, they, they do a, a fantastic job on all of that. Resource shelf, resource stockpile, one button clicks, you're right back in the thing, right? More things, any, and I don't have any specific ideas off the top of my head because they, I, I, I really can't complain. They do a great job, but more things like that, like maybe fixing the, 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 the collectible car tome, right? Patching up the, cause I don't have a lot of complaints to be completely honest. Sure. Keep on fixing the quality of life things and then, uh, gold sinks for the economy. Yeah. Anything that can create, um, Pulling gold directly from the server uh, is going to help stabilize the server's economy uh, going forward because we've seen what an unchecked economy for OSI can do for over 25 years with inflation. I think it is kind of like what you were talking about with gold sink. Something just came to me. You know, they've got like the skeletal mount that's what, 10 million gold and stuff like 25. that. 25. 25 million. You know, okay. So I think those would be good, more of those, but less money and the reason i say less money is because then it's more obtainable and you're sinking more 25 is a lot you're like do i buy a core heart a courtyard house or a fucking or horse right yeah i mean that's that's a lot i mean i'm personally i'm i'm not gonna put 25 million in that horse or gold links right but i would yeah gold links but i would put five million in a in a horse on a prep vendor and i'm sure there's a lot of other people that would as well um Mm -hmm. and, and so you know some of those more maybe obtainable ranges of mounts custom like that i think would be really cool um or just more clothes that are gold only you know that are really cool looking because i know hayes hayes is doing phenomenal work in the in the art area for oh uh, my god the animations are fantastic the everything did you see the new one with the little mustache that no there's a mustache thing yeah it's a it's just a mustache handlebar mustache it's it's fantastic Okay, that'll be great for a cowboy outfit. <laughs> oh, dude, it's just the handlebars, nothing. Just yeah. the handlebar mustache. If, it's gonna be awesome. If I did, if I didn't have a baby face, I would actually shave my beard for a stream and just do a, a handlebar mustache. But let me tell you, dude, it looks terrible. <laughs> I'm drawing mine out. I can't get anywhere like that, but you know, I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, that's great, man. That that would be really cool. I, I, I hope that goes in. I mean, I know it will, right? It's just a matter of time. Yeah, Owen put it on, uh, he, he teased it earlier, I believe. It was okay. uh, on the Discord. So like I'll, I said, I'm trying to integrate myself a little bit more sure. in the Discord too. Yeah, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to check it out. All right, so, you know, obviously, man, I, I love Outlands. Outlands is, I mean, in all honesty for me, I, I got to say Outlands is and has been my favorite game of all time. It, it really is. Um, I, I mean, when I think about hours spent and how it's, created this passion project of uh of a youtube channel streaming things like that you know that's kept me engaged outlands is it for me um it's amazing but with that i do find excitement in other games as well so like for you i mean what are what are some other games that you're excited about playing uh right now okay and do do you you do play you caught me in a really good moment, right? So outside of Outlands, right? My two loves currently, Diablo 4, obviously, just coming out. Um, I don't know if I'll be streaming it because I think there is this, like, uh, it's it's an oversaturated maybe stream thing. And like, maybe I, maybe I will, maybe I won't. But I played everything Diablo from Diablo 1, Diablo 2, Dupin, Stones of Jordans, mm-hmm. uh, Diablo 3, uh paragon level 877 billion uh i don't even know right so i'm really excited for some diablo 4 action um i'm actually so excited i won a stream a a key from oxford stream so my son will be playing on the pc my wife will be playing on the downstairs uh xbox and i will be playing on the upstairs xbox all separate accounts because we game share and uh, yeah, everyone on their own screen having a blast, killing the minions of hell, man. I can't wait. It's That's really fun. like, I look forward to family time playing games, killing minions like that. So Diablo yeah. 4, a lot of fun. And uh, I haven't got it yet. Uh, but I put in request for Father's Day uh, for the new Zelda on the Switch. Okay. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited because I... Uh, I don't always drive to work when I'm the further out drives, you know, half an hour to an hour. I, I'll get my half an hour gameplay in in the morning and half an hour on the way back. And yeah. 
I'm really excited to play uh, to play the new Zelda on the Switch. I've I've seen a few streams. I kind of lurk. Same thing with Diablo. I don't want to really spoil the storyline. Yeah. Because when I play a game, I'm not going to just like rush through it. I kind of like want to enjoy it, casually play it, and then uh, enjoy it afterwards with the homies. Yeah, I, I'm with you there. I uh, it's funny, man. You you said Zelda. I'm probably the worst Zelda fan ever. I mean, I but at the same time, I've got so many Zelda posters. I've got a Master Sword. Should I even got a Triforce tattoo? Um, I'm like, I love Zelda, but I haven't played since. I don't know. Any I think that's another Twilight reason Princess. I like you owe so much. Not to cut you off, Bone. Uh, <laughs> Zelda, right? The back in the day, like what was it zelda one or two like it just dropped you in that caves yeah all right have fun play yeah that yeah. was it that's what that was the instructions you got so yeah. you all right drops you in shelter all yeah. right have fun play that's, it. that's <laughs> what you do man you just you just figure, figure it out, out. Dude. you figure oh, it yeah. out and then and then you rely on talking to other people and and mm-hmm. i think you know going back to that i think that uh that that's an issue i mean throughout the years it, that's become less and less and there's more hand holding in the beginning and there isn't any hand holding. And so people will come and play Ultima and there isn't any of that hand holding and they just don't really know what to do. And they're just like, all right, well, the game's too hard starting out with it, you know, because they, they don't. And so that's where, again, we got to step in and be like, here you go. This is how you get in. I had another thing that I forgot to say to like what should be added. This was uh, previously alluded on, on a different podcast with you, but I'm going to retouch it because I thought it's very important Yeah, <laughs> for a new player. When you start in outlands, I wish there was some type of questing vendor that says, all right, right. Click your button. Like they said, right click and go to the new player dungeon and train your skills to this level. Like go kill 50 mind bats and reach your, your, your swordsmanship to 70 or 80 or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. Have some cutoff points. And when they get to that specific level, you give them that codex, just the codex. They can still earn the aspect unlock and everything, but just getting a little, you know, go Provo or go discordance, uh, 30 skeletons. Yeah. Bam. Give you the bard codex. Now, what is it really costing uh, anyone, right? It's costing the MCD and 25 arcanes. And instead of relying on the streamers and the, the community like that to help out the new players, they can essentially be doing it themselves and feeling that sense of accomplishment while learning yeah. game mechanics. I agree. A hundred percent. So whoever alluded to that, I think it was Lucy, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Was it Lucy? I, uh... Well, I know I've talked about that many times. Oh, I, but, dude, I've heard it many it, times, it and probably, I want you to look yeah. to it because it's a great idea. It really is. Yeah. The bar codex, the sort, whatever codex you get, you know, if you want to figure out a way to give someone an aspect unlock by, you know, maybe adventuring out of shelter and going to your and yeah. you have to go and kill uh, an ogre lord or you know a set of monsters uh, that are tied to the the aspect, there can be you know just a way yeah. of teaching players and hand holding them a little bit better in the beginning or tool tips. I talk about tool tips a lot. That'd be helpful. Just kind of the same thing. Like you, right. When you log in, it's like, all right, cool. Um, see this little blue gem. You can drag it and make your, uh, your screen bunch bigger. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now you can right click to move. Okay, good job. Let's move over here. All right. This is the training area. See these dummies here. You can click them and you can scan your skills, but first let's go to shelter, turn to the right, run North. Here's your, how you open your compass. The N is, uh, means north. In this game, it's a different angle. So you're going to walk up to the shelter dungeon. Awesome. Now here, your skills gain twice as fast. You can take it all the way to 80. I agree. You know what I mean? Just like mm-hmm. get them through shelter with tool tips and, and reading all that out. And It would help with the player retention because there is yeah. an extremely high learning curve with macros and just knowing how things and mechanics work within the game. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and shout out to Trevec of uh, NWO, Ace of Spades in YouTube. Uh, and in YouTube chat, he he runs around at the pwn zone, which is right there at the spawn. Yeah, the pwn zone, <laughs> right there at the spawn point of uh, new players, and he just spams. Any new players have any questions? Here I am, and then he'll like have his Discord and the message and everything, and he'll just sit there and that's what he does all day long, just answering questions for new players. He doesn't really give them anything unless they just really, you know, whatever. But um. He just gives them information and and shows them where to go. And I think that's extremely cool. But I think some in-game stuff would be cooler. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So either way, man. Um, Okay. So what, I mean, what, who, who do you think should be the next person 
on the Pwncast. I mean, there's there's been uh, quite a few, but okay. So we've had uh, we've had Bear. Yep, Bear was the first one. Sir Glavos. Yep. yep. Lucy. Yep. Mister <laughs> Big Business. He's such a wild man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and myself right yeah yeah so let's let's look let's look we've had we've had some we've had some service members i shout out to all those service members bear uh mr big business we've had we've had path we've had sir uh, which is kind of funny because he sir sir glavos is in sir and uh-huh. so was lucy she ended up joining us the barkeep and everything and i love that uh-huh. that part of the community and I, I, it's been requested before. I would love to see the other side of the spoon, the other side of the table. I used to do it. If we can get, I don't know if it's possible, if we can get the jester, mm-hmm. if we can get Mr. Sanjuan himself, if we can get uh, Evil Fireblade, if we can get uh, any of these guys that, that stream thieving, I mm-hmm. want to hear their mentality currently on, and, and I, 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 I think I know because that's like that's what I did, but that's their mentality. But if we can't get those guys, man, we have so many great streamers, dude. Uh, you got my my good my good friend that I serve uh, overseas with, Kick Rocks. He'd be a great guy. He's cool. Uh, across the pond, we got Aussie Tamer. Uh, see what see what you know. He's on different ones. He's been playing uh, Unchained and UO Outlands. Uh, we got. We had too many great people, but yeah, I would like to just see the other side of the coin. Maybe see corn for cornfield Jesus, little Amish, yeah, a little Amish hammer, dude, a little That'd Amish uh, cornfield Jesus. Hey, I'm yeah. gonna try to make that stick. So, uh, yeah, man, all great guys. Can't go wrong with anybody, and uh, great community for real. Yes. Everybody, honestly, I have no bad complaints. Anyone would be fantastic. It would be, man. Awesome. Well, all right. So, I mean. But thank you, one, for being here today, man. I do appreciate it. Um, I, I I knew this would be a good conversation, and it obviously was. Um, I I just I was like, this will be a really easy <laughs> easy one, and then they all yeah. have been really, um, and that's always helpful. So, I mean, tell tell everybody, you know, your different socials. Um, if you got anything other than Twitch, you know, uh, you know where they can find you, stuff like that. Uh, I am my alter ego 24. You can catch me over at uh, Twitch TV, my alter ego I, inside there. I have links to my discord. I really haven't done any other socials. I, I'm not really big into Facebook or Instagram or Twitter space or face space and all that stuff. So with that said, just on the Twitch right now, um, doing stuff within the discord. If you want to hang out, my main streams are always that flagship stream Sunday from eight 30 to about two 30, uh, 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. every single Sunday. And we just, you know, we farm, group farming, uh, teaching. You can come in, ask some questions. We do some team mapping, some ocean content, apparently. Like, I just, you know, a little jack of all trades. Just sprinkle a little bit of everything. Exactly. Some anti-thieving. Um, I'm actually thinking about adding a Thursday stream okay. exclusive, exclusively for Outlands and exclusively it will be faction gameplay with path members. Nice. So that might be a little, uh, little tidbit for you guys. It'll be a little short, you know, two, three hour stream, nothing crazy. It takes a lot of, I, I, I'm surprised that you, that you do the five hour stream, the two, and even those little, those, those onesie twosies for two, three hours, man, you, the, yeah. you know, yeah. you gotta be ready. So, but yeah, I'm yep. going to try to get a little bit more content out there for you guys. And, uh, and yeah, just keep on being, Keep on keeping on, man. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, thanks again for being here, man. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Um, I'll grab some sake. <laughs> I've been waiting this entire time. Everyone should know this, right? This is how we should end everything at a, at a, at a right pace. And, uh, man, I really enjoyed our conversation, Pone. Thank you for having me as a guest. Hopefully it wasn't too long-winded. No, it was great. And uh, can't wait for the next streams, brother. Awesome, man. Appreciate you. Guys, y'all have a great one. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Cheers. Huzzah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs>